Get ready for a no BS approach to health and fitness. This is NBS Fitness Radio. All right, welcome back to MBS Fitness Radio. I'm here with my buddy Ryan. Um, Ryan is in a um, a fitness business owners mentorship group with me. He owns Ohio Strength up in Columbus, Ohio, uh, and we're excited to have him on the podcast to talk about uh, his journey through fitness. But specifically, uh, he recently had some twin. Um, 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 remind me if they're boys or girls. Twin, twin boys. Yeah, twin boys. That's right. Uh, recently had some twin boys. Um, and of course, that will throw a bit of a curveball in your in your fitness routine. So we're going to talk to him about kind of the lessons he's learned and adaptations he's made along the ways. But first, uh, welcome to the podcast, Ryan. Yeah, thanks. I'm uh, super excited to be here, David. Awesome, man. Give me kind of your background in fitness. How you got started? What's kind of your story when it comes to to training? Absolutely. Um, played just about every sport under the sun as a as a kid. Uh, my parents got me involved in all sorts of different things from football, soccer, gymnastics, baseball, basketball, wrestling. Once I got to the high school level, focused primarily on football and track, did a lot of other just extreme stuff too, a bit of an adrenaline junkie, snowboarding, things like that. Uh, college, I was actually a rower at Ohio State. Um, so kind of switched gears. My knees were getting a little bit uh, wonky on me in my junior, senior year of football. And I was a defensive back and just couldn't change direction as quickly as I used to be able to. And then uh, discovered crew or rowing uh, in college. And lower impact but for anybody who's been on a rowing machine or done that it's very intense still super aerobically and anaerobically challenging and a ton of fun had the opportunity to uh go to national my freshman year and doing that and uh that was also same time i started to get into personal training and uh, strength coaching was uh, my freshman year in college i was a uh, an exercise science major at ohio state and uh, minored in nutrition and then uh, ended up actually getting my MBA later on, working for Rogue Fitness, discovering CrossFit, um, and opened my CrossFit gym about 10 years ago. And I've owned a couple of different CrossFit gyms uh, over the years now, but still own my original one, Ohio Strength. And I'm still involved in coaching myself on a daily basis and hitting my own classes and my own workouts and programming every day. So I uh, still love to stay very active. It's a non-negotiable part of my daily routine, even more for my mental health than my physical health at this point in my life. That's awesome. What did you do for Rogue? Uh, I set up uh, most of their international operations. So okay. uh, yeah, I came in, it was like summer of 2012, right after I finished up my MBA. And I did a lot of uh, international stuff, studying abroad in Shanghai, China when I was getting my MBA. And I worked at the US consulate over there in Shanghai for a little internship while I was there as well. And then uh, Rogue was looking to expand more with their uh, Rogue Europe, uh, ultimately uh, more of like an international distributor network was something I worked on a bit. Uh, we had all the exposure to international events with the regional uh, CrossFit events that used to be a thing that Rogue had to be very involved in supplying and, and helping to run those events. And then, um, you know, kind of uh, really just in a, in a business like that, where it's still very early on as well, you get to be sort of a jack of all trades too. So I worked directly for uh, Bill and Katie, the owners of Rogue, and honestly got to do a little bit of everything. You know, you, you, you don't really get pigeonholed into one thing in a company like that. Uh, and I know a lot of people probably think of Rogue as a pretty big company now, but uh, still really had the small mom and pop, like uh, grassroots feel back then. Uh, and I'm, I'm, my gym is about 800 meters away from their headquarters now. So still very close to them physically. And uh, Usually at least once a year, if not more frequently, we'll have a local gym owner meet up and get together with uh, Bill or, or Katie over there at Rogue and talk shop and talk fitness and what's going on in the in the world of you know, the whole economy with, with gyms and fitness and everything and what they kind of see and how the, they see the landscape evolving and changing. And uh, I'll usually run into Bill and Katie around town here in Columbus too. So still very much like cool people, family vibe, um, awesome organization. And I learned so much while I was there. So uh, it, it was a, a great way to kind of bridge the gap for me between sort of you know, diving into the office world and, and the business world, but then realizing I wanted to move back into sort of my roots with uh, fitness and training and opening my own gym. Very cool. So then do you, do you go pick up all your equipment or do you have it shipped? So a little bit of both. Uh, there's, I've probably had three to five orders that are like full semi truck load orders. We have a pretty yeah. large space and uh, those are getting shipped. I'm not going and picking those up. Um, 
but then there's definitely been a few, you know, overloaded U-Haul trucks that I've, I've gone and run and, you know, like really testing the axle uh, on some of those and, uh, or, or yeah, just loading down my, my SUVs or trucks. And, and uh, yeah, so we'll, you know, for, definitely pick up the, the small stuff. <laughs> Very cool. So, uh, how'd you first get involved in CrossFit or hear about it? Like, um, you weren't, were you, you were, were you doing that in high school or college yeah, no. or afterwards? Yeah. You yeah. I graduated high school in 05, uh, bachelor's degree, 09 MBA in 2012. It was somewhere, I want to say right around when I started my MBA, maybe 2010, I believe was when I first discovered it. I'd, I'd heard the term and as someone in the fitness space as a trainer, I think I just generalized in my mind what I thought CrossFit probably was based solely upon its name, where I was like, oh, this is just people that are cross training. It's probably just some boot camp type of a thing. You know, that's not really what I do. I'm more into the sports specific strength and conditioning, whatever. Didn't know a lot about it. <laughs> Finally discovered it. 2010. Uh, actually started doing it uh, at the original Rogue Gym here in Columbus, which then rebranded, was sold, changed names. It's CrossFit Grandview now. It's a different location. Um, but uh, was doing it at a couple different gyms around town here throughout uh, business school and then at Rogue when I worked for Rogue and kind of got to the point with CrossFit and business in general where I was like, you know what? I've wanted to own a gym my entire life. I have the business skills. I have the fitness skills. The only thing holding me back from doing that is fear. And that's a stupid reason. So I should probably just go ahead and do this thing. Awesome. So when did you open up a, a higher strength? Uh, 2013. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, Very cool. About years. Um, so describe kind of um, your, your fitness trajectory. You kind of first get involved in CrossFit. Um, in your early twenties, I imagine like most people you were, you were trying to take it to this high level as you could, like, what was your kind of fitness trajectory over the, over the time? Yeah. So, uh, I can remember back around 2010, 2012 was just sort of dabbling, learning about it. And then around 2012, that was kind of where I was like, Oh, I feel like if I gave this a year or two of really hard training, I could probably make it to regionals looking at these guys who are doing regionals. And then that was like right around the time when I feel like things were like really starting to ramp up and get competitive. And, yeah. and I was, I was also like, well, my career is pretty important to me too. So, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be in the gym three hours a day. I mean, I've got a real big boy job over here and it's like, I can basically go to class, maybe do a couple extra lifts here or there. Uh, but very much enjoyed the competitive side of it. And that's, I made a lot of really great friends there, you know, the same kind of experience I think most of us had in a CrossFit gym and, uh, and I still to this day enjoy competing with myself, competing yeah. with, you know, my, my buddies in classes and things of that nature. But, you know, through a decade of small business ownership, all the different ups and downs we've all had with COVID and all those crazy things now having kids, uh, you know, the number one priority is stay healthy, keep moving. Uh, and then that is reflected in how I interact with my members, my clients and and try to, educate young athletes on how their fitness trajectory might progress over the years too, when they're kind of making risk reward decisions around their training and whatnot. Awesome. That's cool. Okay. Um, what was something you, you believed was true prior to owning a gym, like with regards to your own personal fitness that turned out to not be true? I, probably the number one thing that almost everybody thinks is like, Oh, I'm going to open a gym and I'm just going to be hanging out at the gym all day. So I'll just be working out all the time. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then I work out less as a gym owner than I did prior to owning a gym. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, like, so, and then most people's questions like, well, why, like what makes it so difficult to actually work out when you work in a gym? Yeah, I, I, I mean, that's probably not as specific to gym ownership as it is to just small business ownership and entrepreneurship in general. I mean, you get into it and you, you think you've got at least some idea of what the experience is going to be like, but you really have no idea until you really start getting your hands dirty. And especially in the early days when you just don't know anything about anything and you're working so much, you're working, you know, I was working 22 hours a day at one point when I was still working my day job at Rogue and running the gym. So trying to sleep two hours a night after, you know, I would get up at 4 a.m., run some classes from 5 to 8 a.m., go to the office at Rogue from 8 a.m. until like 5.30 p.m., start some more classes at 6 p.m., run classes until 9 p.m. because I was trying to do onboarding and other stuff after our regular general classes. And then 
then you've got to do all the back office stuff. You've got to go answer emails, admin, check your website, do some social media, do marketing, do all these other things. And before you notice midnight or 2 a.m. And I'm like sleeping for two hours. And I mean, those were like sleeping in the closet days at the at the gym, you know. And uh, so, yeah, that's why you're not working out because you're like barely staying alive. If you're if you're doing it like I was doing it early on with the kind of burn the boats mentality all in and uh, and not really leaving a lot of room uh, for other life. <laughs> Yeah, no doubt. Golly, that's, that is rough. Yeah. I remember <clears throat> I worked 86 hours a week. Um, cause that was how many hours the gym was open. That was how many hours I was at the gym. Now yeah. add on top of that, the, the, the stuff I was doing at home, but I was working 86 hours a week <laughs> when I first opened my gym. Um, so, um, prior to having kids, what was yeah. your, what was your training schedule like? Yeah. Um, uh pretty honestly pretty similar to where I'm at right now um so I guess my wife and I I'm 36 she's 35 uh we we did deliberately wait a little bit longer to have children because we're both very career oriented you know she's got a master's degree as well we do um we were very focused on doing a lot of things just enjoying life and, and building businesses and traveling and uh you know building our careers so definitely pushed it off for a little while and got to a point where you know like everybody always says, there's never a perfect time to do it. But I think we got to the place where we were as ready as we were ever going to be. Yeah. Uh, and part of part of that decision was, we feel like we have some semblance of balance, you know, as balanced as you can be as a small business owner, but some yeah. semblance of control, stability, balance in our lives. Uh, we were on the other side of COVID. And we just we had so much perspective, I think, on life too, where it's like, all right, you live once, we need to do this thing, let's, let's do this. And Part of making that decision to have children for me meant I needed to massively simplify my life. So going yep. into that, when we started trying to get pregnant, when we knew we were pregnant, that's when I made a decision. I had to sell my other gym because I was like, you know what? I'm operating in Columbus, Ohio, and Orlando, Florida. That's a whole other conversation, but two different states, very challenging. Um, and I was getting pulled to a place where if I wanted to really try to make the gym in Orlando, as successful as it could be, I was going to have to spend way more time there. And, you know, starting to have children, that's the opposite of what you want to be doing is trying to pull yourself away from home more often. So yeah. simplifying in that sense, uh, looking at being better at delegating roles and tasks within the business. So little things that I take for granted every single day, it's like, oh, that's no big deal. I'll just go do that thing real quick, you know, but then yeah. starting to make note of every little thing that I'm doing and ensuring that I've got systems and things in place to take care of that, making sure that we're hiring, being more uh, redundant in staffing and having different things covered so that there's less emergencies. And, and in making all of those very deliberate decisions as a business owner, that has allowed my wife and I to create at least some form of stability where she and I can both try to prioritize our fitness still because we know for our mental health, for our sanity, for me as a fitness professional, how important that is. Uh, so I will say at least the, the kids part, the, the business part changed it a lot for me. The kids part didn't necessarily uh, change it a ton. It probably has hit my wife a little harder than it's hit me. Um, but you know, for me, it's like, I still have to make sure, I, I sort of have a daily minimum in, in my yeah. mind. It's like, all right, my daily minimum is I'm gonna take my class at my gym, if I'm there yep. at the gym, or if I can't make it to the gym, my wife and I have a schedule where I, I watch the kids exclusively a few days while she's at work, she does it while I'm at work. Um, if I'm at home, we've got a Peloton at home as well. We've got some dumbbells at home. We've got pull-up bars. We have all that kind of stuff to make sure that if we can't get out of the house that, you know, we're still getting that daily minimum, you know, resistance training, aerobic conditioning, whatever it is we feel like yeah. we need to do on that day, getting a, a good 30 to 60 minute sweat in at a bare minimum. So. Uh, I guess making things a little bit more accessible at home was part of that too. All right. Well, how much of uh, how much of that process? Because obviously, you you were having this awareness of like, okay, my my kids get here, things are going to change, so I'm going to go ahead and set myself up success now. Oh, yeah. Um, like how much of what you currently do was kind of predetermined, and how much was kind of learning once they got here. Uh, there was certainly some predetermined awareness that kind of how you were that this is going to be a thing. I need to have a plan. There's going to be change. Uh, 
and being old enough and wise enough to know, like, we don't know what we don't know. This is a new thing. You know, we're going to have some struggles and some difficulties here. And certainly the first maybe three months of twins was, was very rough. That was, you know, <laughs> really difficult to sleep. Anybody who's had a single baby, you know, take that situation that you're dealing with, like disrupted sleep, and then realize like now there's two. And if, even if one of them is sleeping, the other one's probably awake. So there's just like never a time when they're both asleep. Uh, so that hit my wife and I pretty hard. Sleep is kind of like the base of our pyramid and like our Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If, if the sleep is not great, then everything in life gets messed up. Um, so there was well, certainly- how, how'd, y'all, how'd y'all address that? Yeah, definitely adjustment on the fly with that. Um, and she and I, we joke, we've kind of got like night shift now where again, if it's the next day, whoever has the heavier schedule sort of gets a little bit of a break and it's like, all right, the other person is on night shift tonight. And so we, we don't trade off. It's not like, okay, this time you get up or I get up or whatever. It's like, no, this is your night to try to get maybe a little bit better sleep, which yeah. is still not great, but a little bit better than it could be. Um, and that's still what we do right now. Uh, whoever has the busier schedule the next day, we sort of trade off. Um, and also just knowing there's light at the end of the tunnel. So just having perspective from being through a lot of trials and tribulations and struggle. And I guess having gone through those periods where I was only sleeping two hours a night for six months or whatever at a stretch, I guess kind of knowing what rock bottom can look like and how bad that can be. And also realizing that I'm capable of surviving those things. Um, so that you have a predetermined attitude of like, I know we're going to get through this. And even if this is a temporary issue uh, and, you know, my daily minimums then were, all right, the the kids are hanging out right here and I'm going to have to jump back and forth and feed them. And while I've got some Netflix comedy special on TV, I'm just going to hit like push-ups every few minutes or something. So yeah, that, that was a little bit different. It wasn't going into the gym and clanging and banging the barbells as much. It was get in whatever we can get in to make sure that we're, maintaining our mental and physical health and not falling apart <laughs> Love that yeah maybe that's a <laughs> i'm gonna try that advice next time someone tells me they're having a kid i'm like well if you just anchor yourself for a period of time of getting two hours of sleep then getting four hours of sleep feels awesome <laughs> yeah, it's all perspective man <laughs> um cool so uh yeah i like i like the uh, what you said about like having some daily minimums And just kind of recognizing that and this is going to be part of my uh, routine every day, but with the situation changing, those standards can shift a little bit, but I'm still keeping something, uh, some level of health and fitness uh, in there. For sure. And then are you familiar with the concept of like the minimum effective dose with training as well? So I think a lot about that as well. And, you know, I'm going to try to be as efficient as possible. And I'm not out here just trying to do more for the sake of doing more. Cause that's not necessarily what I need. That's not necessarily going to make me better here. It's like, what's the least amount of work that I can do that can get me the greatest response or training benefit right now. How quickly can I get that done? You know, which movements are going to be the most useful here, those sorts of things. So, you know, it might be hit a big compound lift, hit a couple of quick accessories, and then, do like a 10 minute echo bike sprint or something. And I can be in and out of the gym in 30 minutes and yeah. still feel like I got in a really good workout that hits, you know, checks most of the health and fitness boxes that I need. How much? Um, so obviously like when you're dealing with, with kids, like life gets a little bit more dynamic, you know, when, when you're living solo without, without children, like every day is kind of like your same routine. You're going to get the same amount of sleep, generally speaking. So you can kind of follow a generalized plan. Kids get thrown in the mix. They might sleep the, the night before. They might not. They may come wake you up and, with, and filled with uh, covered in puke. You know, it's so it's like you have no idea what what's in store for the next day. How much did you pre-plan and say, like, were you writing out a routine or a program or like having a general program that you were following, but just would go, you know what, today's the day where I'm cutting that out, that out, that out, or are you just making it up on the fly? Um, as much as I can, I'm still hitting our classes, sticking to our classes. I enjoy that. That's why I got into CrossFit in the first place was like, shut my brain off. I don't, you know, I don't want to write my own program during this hour. I want to show up, take a class that someone else is teaching. I'm going to do whatever everybody else is doing. Even if I don't want to do it today, especially if I'm sleep deprived or whatever else is going on, 
that helps me feel a little bit more accountable to just getting it done. Um, but again, I'm kind enough to myself and experienced enough to know that like, if I don't have a hundred percent on that day, 80 or 90% is probably still going to be okay. And it's better than nothing. So yeah. getting rid of the, the all or nothing attitude as well, realizing that something's probably better than nothing, especially in this life stage that we're in. And I think it also just brought awareness to the fact that we, we definitely didn't know exactly what it was going to be like. So that was, there's a lot of wild cards and, and curveballs there. Um, and we, we accepted that. Uh, but then realizing very quickly that not necessarily my, just my fitness plan, but like our whole life plan. Like we, we have to dial in our plan, our schedule, all those things so much more. It brought so much more awareness for me of my wife's calendar and what she has going on now, because someone has to be taking care of these children, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, so before it was sort of like, we're a partnership and we're together, but she can be off independently doing her own thing and doing whatever. And I can do the same. Like, no, not anymore. And like, now I need to know exactly what she's doing where, when she's available and vice versa. And it forced me to focus my, my training and my work so much more because it was, those things were still bleeding into all the other parts of my life. Yeah. They were bleeding into the free moments. You're laying in bed, answering emails and texts or whatever you're, you know, on, on the weekends, I'm taking sales calls or I'm doing personal training sessions. And well, now I've got these two or three days a week where I am 100% exclusively undivided attention to the kids. But that was also a lesson. I thought, oh, I'll still be able to do admin work while I'm watching these two infants. Like, of course, they'll just like sit there and lay there. They're not really doing anything. I can do a couple things. And of course, that's not true. As most parents, I think, no. Um, so it went from I'm pretty much working seven days a week to now, if my wife's working three of those days, I've got four days and I need to jam everything into those four days. And I try to do most of my fitness on those four days. I try to hit most of my workout stuff on those days. I try to hit 90% of my work on those days and yeah. only like emergency stuff that pops up on other days uh, because I, I have to and, and want to give that undivided attention to my kids on those separate days now. Um, and that's been a double-edged sword. It's, it's nice to see what it's like to shut my brain off and compartmentalize my life a little bit and disconnect a little bit from the business on those days. It's almost like a mini vacation. But then I also freak out a little bit come like Monday or whatever, where I'm like, oh man, I feel like I've been gone for so long and all the work has piled up. Yeah. So there's a lot of uh, mindset shifts yeah. with that. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's 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 a planning challenge, but it's it's useful. It's making me a better business owner. But, you know, being a being a parent is making me a better business owner now as well. Yeah, no, hundred percent. It's like you said, you have to be way more efficient. Yep. Um, you find way more clarity. Like, what's important? What do I have to get done? And mm -hmm. then how can I get it done in the most efficient way as possible? Yep. And honestly, I I it's weird, but I think my training right now might be better than it was a year ago, right before the kids were born, because I am just that much more focused. I'm just very laser focused on things now. Well, um, what when were you taking class before kids, and now when do you take classes? Uh, before kids, I prefer to get it done earlier in the morning. Uh, I'm not a morning person, but I just know with the flow of my day, that's the most likely time when I'm going to get it in, in that non-negotiable format without some other issue popping up in my day and kind of ruining the opportunity to get it in. So uh, I do still air toward the mornings, but I was probably doing a little more frequently at like five or 6 a.m. And now it's probably more like 7.30 a.m. Yeah. And I think that's, that's sleep related. We've tried to figure out how to, you know, get into a healthier sleep routine and prioritize our sleep a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. You're like, I like getting it done, but look, dude, like I can only run on fumes for so many days in a row. Yeah. How old are your twins? Uh, they are 10 months on the 13th. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, how have you seen your physical fitness uh, play out as just being a dad? Yeah. Uh, I, again, I'm a fitness nerd, so I think it, in ways that I'm sure no normal human thinks, but it's like I'm – picking them up and putting them down all day long. And, yeah. you know, I'll notice like, is my background and what am I doing? And then I'm feeling all these interesting different things. I'm doing that. But, um, 
I mean, I appreciate now how people who are not deadlifting and are not taking care of themselves, if you're doing that a hundred times a day and you're not paying attention to posture and mobility and different things you have going on, it'd be very easy to herniate a disc or blow something out or struggle with those things. So, um, you know, I'm already thinking about when they get into sports, you know, I'm, again, I'm going to be a little bit of an older dad starting out. So it's like, Hey, you know, I really need to balance the risk reward of my training here too. Cause I don't want to blow out a knee or something to where I can't then just go play pickup basketball or teach my kids how to kick a soccer ball or do some of these yeah. things that we all want to do. Um, so yeah, every time I get that itch where it's like, Oh, you know, I qualified for quarterfinals this year, maybe I should like ramp up my training and you know, maybe we could do like semis for the age group or something, you know, I don't know, whatever. And, but then again, I, I dial it back and I'm like, but is that really the most important thing in my life right now with everything else in the grand scheme that's going on? Eh, probably not. Um, so yeah, the kids just become the, the, the guiding light for all these decisions now that we're making. And when I'm, you and I were talking investing and we're talking about, we're thinking retirement, we're thinking legacy, we're thinking all these things now that I wasn't thinking a few years ago. And again, that's a wonderful thing as a business owner, because it, it keeps you focused on honestly, just all the right things. I'm, I have to take care of myself and take care of them. Well, that makes me a better as a business owner. I'm, I am more patient now that I'm taking care of these children. I'm more patient with my staff as a yeah. business owner. I'm, yeah. I'm having better conversations with people. I am doing a better job of, of delegating and creating checks and balances and feedback loops and just all sorts of things because of forced routine, forced planning, forced compromise, just all these things that you don't think about when you are a selfish, you know, <laughs> not parent. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I mean, yeah. being a parent is essentially shifting your, it's like the first time, I mean, you get, I want to say this, being married is like your first real shift into kind of being like, okay, life's not just about me. I have to consider other people. And then, but, but kids just throw that just amplify that to the max. Yeah. And so, yeah, you, it just shifts your perspective where now you become a little bit more empathetic and a little bit more kind of understanding bigger picture focused, everything. So yeah, hundred percent. I remember, I remember my first uh, kid was born. Uh, like prior to that, I was, I was, I call myself fat David. I was a big old power lifter and couldn't get anything done. Um, and so like, I couldn't squat to depth without like enough weight on my back, <laughs> like crazy tight hips. And so I started like training CrossFit, trying to get in shape. And, uh, remember my son was born. I like did a God, did our, the way our tub was set up, we were giving him a bath and it was like a, whatever it was a one month old or two month old, you, you, you had to be very careful with them. Mm -hmm. Couldn't just plop them in the bath. So anyways, I had to do like a full goblet squat to depth and like sit there for a second to like get them situated. I was like, man, I wouldn't have been able to do that. Had I not been training for the last year, like I would have been stuck and be like, I can't get my, I can't get my daggum son a bath cause I'm too out of shape. <laughs> so that was like a, an epiphany moment for me. You'd be like, huh, okay. Like this is actually paying off. Have you gotten, um, have you felt like your arms have grown yet from carrying children? Cause like I said, crazy as it sounds, I think I've put on at least a half inch on my biceps from having kids. There's, there's been moments. Yeah. Where we're, we're hanging out at like a social gathering or something. And I'm yeah, just got to like hook them in the arm or, or both there for a, a lengthy period of time. And it's like, man, this is burning. Or I did the, uh, I was at my nephew's wrestling tournament and the school was jam packed. Everybody and their brother was there and we had to park like, you know, probably more than a half a mile away and I, I had the two car seats and I was farmers carrying the two seats all the way in and I'm like you know setting them down shaking it out but it's like hey at least I can do this because I'm telling yeah. you right now like if it's this hard for me and there's a lot of people that are not doing this right now the um the latest half example I felt was we went to a um, a water park and they have got um you know slides you can go down and so essentially like my oldest son like can we do this for the next two hours <laughs> so it was carrying up and down, up and down. Yeah. yes like out 400 flights of stairs i don't even know uh carrying an inner tube so you're like you get your inner tube carry it and then like half the time he was like dad will you carry me because he's four and like these 
steps are like a big, it meant, it'd be like me having to do that on like double size steps. So I was like, like step up. Up. it's like box step ups or box jumps, you know, 400 times times how many laps you did. <laughs> yeah. Like a 30 inch box step yeah. up. So anyways, he was like, you carry me. So you know, for two hours carrying homie and, and inner tube up and down and just doing it. And, um, and it wasn't, you know, I remember being like, I was like, okay, that wasn't bad. Like aware of like, okay, like, <laughs> who get a little burning in my calves and my quads. Uh, but man, so many parents are just posted up on the, um, on the, the sides, just eating beans and drinking beer and weren't, they couldn't participate and experience it with their kids. They were just like, y'all go have fun. I'll sit here, They're like watch instead of partake. And I was like, man, that sucks. Yeah. Yeah. I've already started thinking about that. We, we like to hike backpack, you know, you and I, I was talking with you about free diving and I like to skydive all these things. I'm just like, I hope I can do all that stuff with my boys in the next like 10 or 20 years, you know, and just like do it right alongside them. And I don't necessarily remember a ton of dads being able to do all of that kind of stuff. I mean, yeah, here and there are things, but you know, not the, the really physically demanding stuff growing up. So I'm excited for that, looking forward to that. And just reminds me of like why I do this stuff every day and why I want to keep doing it and, and how I want to keep doing it too. I'm, I want to know how the conversation goes with the wife about taking your son's skydiving. Oh yeah, I know. I, we have already <laughs> joked about this because she's like, I know that they're going to, they know you did it. They're going to want to do it. And, and I'm like, you know, we're going to do it as safely as we can, but it's going to happen. You just, you just <laughs> You got essentially 18 years to prepare yourself. So yeah. <laughs> just know it's in 18 years, we're going skydiving. So yeah. <laughs> how, um, well, how has your nutrition adapted a bit? Cause, um, I know it was kind of a big thing for us is, uh, like, you know, I know how to feed myself, but then I have to feed these, uh, folks who don't eat the things that I eat. So how's nutrition mm-hmm. changed since you had kids? Yeah, it's the first time that we've actually done uh, like prepared meal deliveries and, and yeah. first time we've ever done like the grocery delivery. We had never done any of that stuff. Like grew up kind of frugal to a fault and I'm like, I don't need people to do that. I can do all that stuff myself, you know, and I and I don't mind doing meal prep. It's something that we, my wife and I, we kind of make a, a date thing almost out of that sort of stuff and, and enjoy doing that. But yeah, we get to the point where we're like, no, we, we like literally do not have the time now. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so we're still trying to eat, you know, a very healthy diet and you know we're not going to be going out to mcdonald's and ordering a bunch of crap and garbage so we're definitely diving into more of the meal delivery or prepared meal services things of that nature um as far as what we are eating i think uh again honestly maybe i've gotten a little bit more particular more health conscious i know i'm i'm not drinking as many beers with my buddies i'm not going out with them socially as much as i might have been for football saturdays or whatever it might be, or if I do, I mean, it's a lot less. And uh, so that's a, a huge benefit, I guess, uh, just for my sleep, for my overall health inflammation, you know, ex- excess calories and whatnot. Um, and then uh, with my wife, when she's breastfeeding, you know, she's got that much more health conscious about what what is she putting in her body? She's very worried about, you know, the effect it might have on the kids, things of that nature. Uh, and then just, you know, wanting to get her body back right after being pregnant. So, you know, I'm trying to support her in any endeavor she's doing there. So, uh, I think for us, it's, it's honestly actually probably improved a little bit. Now there's definitely moments where the, again, the time, the schedule and the timing is tough. Um, I, I guess I'm, I'm sort of fortunate in that I'm a person that has no problem with fasting, uh, with like kind of going for a while without eating, uh, and, that would be my default. Whereas some people, their default is like to stress eat. Mine is like to stress starve myself and just not eat for periods of time. Um, not great when you're trying to build muscle, but you know, keeps you lean at least and not gaining too much weight. Um, so we don't keep a lot of junk around the house. Uh, and now that the kids are, they've started doing solid foods a few months ago and, and, our philosophy so far is basically they just eat whatever we eat. And yeah. since we eat pretty much natural whole foods, it's like, Hey, just mash up the eggs, mash up the avocados, mash up the bananas. I'll get, take a piece of that beef and grind it up. And let's just like yeah. hand them some of that. And so far 
we're not buying any of like the, I don't know, the mini muffins and all this other stuff yeah. that I see a lot of other parents feeding their kids. And, yeah. and I'm sure we'll break down and do a couple things here, or there. And when they go over to their friends' houses, they're going to eat whatever. But when they're with us, like they eat what we eat and that's just going to be their version of normal, I think. So that's been pretty cool so far. And uh, Maverick, my one son is a big eater. He's like, just is crushing everything and always wants to eat. And he's like a little, seems like a little puppy dog or like a little baby bird. If he sees us eating, he crawls <laughs> right over and anything. He's just like open mouth, like feed me. <laughs> other, the other one, Cooper eats everything, but is just not as interested in eating so far. He's way more like distracted and just like, I want to go crawl around and play and do stuff. Yeah. But yeah. It's, uh, it's been, again, kind of a good thing for focus for us. <clears throat> yeah. That now you think about it, I hadn't, I hadn't considered it, but having kids, we essentially like stopped going out as much. Right. Like, I'm go out. And now it's like, no, because <laughs> you got to pay a babysitter and it's a pain in the ass. So, um, yeah, we just definitely started going out less. We used to meal prep, but it was like, man, I don't want to take three hours of my Sunday. So, uh, we started using the mail prep company. And so, yeah, it definitely has like locked us down a little bit more when it comes to like nutrition. Mm -hmm. I think the thing that, that, uh, where we're at is like around, around that eight, uh, or like 12 to like 18 month mark, they just ate everything. And all yeah. of a sudden into like 18 months, they're like, I don't want any of this stuff. You know, like, crap. <laughs> um, and uh, she gets to the point where like, well, like I made this, this is what, what you're going to eat. And you're like trying to balance out. All right. Do I not feed my kid tonight? And what's that going <laughs> to turn out like, or do I force, like give them the thing that they're asking for. And I, like, yeah, we got one kid who, one kid who essentially like when we kind of have like a little meal schedule for them where every day they got like a little protein, they've got a carb, they got a fruit or vegetable. And we can't say that's what you get to eat. But then, um, like one kid is like, cool, eat it. That was great. Thanks, dad. And my other one's like, I can't sit at the table for two seconds. And he just is off and you're like, man, this kid's not going to eat, but he will eat whatever is on your plate. Yeah. So yeah, we're trying to, it's, it's just interesting how like you kind of go through these different stages where you're like, and having three at different stages, you're like trying to create their meal create a, a quality nutritional program for three of them that um that have totally different relationships with food or uh yeah. sponsors to food has been um has been interesting but our our we just kind of plate method it yep has been yeah. the, the easiest thing that we've done and quite frankly we just go look this is what's for dinner you don't want it i'm sorry um kind of structuring like they don't we don't we don't eat desserts and they don't really eat desserts. What's funny is like, they think uh, like when they go to a, um, a birthday party, that's when the, that's when they get to have juice at like mm -hmm. the, the house, they drink water or milk. Um, but like, <laughs> they're like little cocaine addicts. They could they're like, see a Capri Sun, they're like, dad, can I have some juice? Like you have some juice. Like, Oh, that's so good. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> Are you guys still like, are you doing the meal prep companies and then like they're just eating that same food? Is that how you do that? Or what, what does it look like for you guys now? We've kind of balanced back and forth. So for a while, that's what we're doing. And like, you know, sometimes you'd be like, here's shrimp. And they're like, I don't want to eat shrimp. Crap. Um, so we were doing just like kind of your basic ground beef, chicken, white, white rice. So now, um, uh, we, how like, so are you Four about to be five, three, and then about to be two. So okay. basically they're all one year apart. Yeah. Um, and right now what we do is like each day they've got a protein. There's like a schedule just wrote out. They got protein, a carb, and then um, some type of fruit or vegetable. So like Mondays is um, these little grilled chicken nugget things, um, grapes, and then mac and cheese. And then like Tuesdays is like, we just make these little tacos. So they got um, protein and um, veggies hidden in there that they can't see mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So and, like one day's uh, turkey, um, carrots, hummus, and like, and I um, can't remember what the, what the carpet is for that day, but that's kind of like that, that general schedule. 
because uh who's are you preparing it like who's preparing that primarily for him? us so yeah. we'll like buy it because yep. it's not too bad to like meal I mean, everything we did was like what's a quick easy meal prep basically thing so it's either like um uh, from the meal prep company they'll, they'll actually sell like um bulk i can just buy bulk um ground beef and so yeah. ground beef whatever kind of throw it in there like that so that's been a, a it's either been meal prep from the company or we go buy it from costco mm-hmm. kind of give it to them but yeah it was like they were all you know champion eaters until this to one day they're like i don't eat that well crap we just bought all of that from costco and yeah. then like it's been uh i would say nope you're gonna eat this and we'll home to it and they turned it all crazy you have to have the fight of like I'm hungry. Like, well, you, dinner was an hour ago and you didn't want it. And then like meltdown. So. <laughs> and my, well, wife and I, <laughs> my wife and I, I'm like, I'm like, sorry, homie. Guess what? Breakfast is in 12 hours. You'll be okay. Mm-hmm. My wife is like, no, dude, you know, they're hungry. They need to eat. I got it right. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, I think uh, in the end, it's more just like uh, trying to have a, a, healthy nutritional approach to whatever it is and like implement it with them yeah well i think we all just as parents then kind of have to give each other grace it's like you got to do the best that you can do too like there's there's nothing that is perfect anymore you know it's just we're doing the best we can <laughs> yeah. yeah we're doing the best we can we we try to live it out by example we communicate healthy healthy nutrition hey this is why we eat this this is good for you make you grow and you'll be strong and give you energy all that kind of stuff yeah and then um and I, like I said, I, I, the biggest lesson I've learned from being a parent is like, you just better be dynamic. If you, if you're, if the more like, this is just the way it's going to be, the more, uh, that you're going to be surprised. <laughs> like your kids are going to throw cur- curveballs on like on that a lot. Yeah. I'm going to be surprised a lot. Cause that's, that's how I would be too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just, well, it's trying to find, I mean, and I think there's, you need to have a balance. You can't just let the kids run the roost, you know, right. but then, um, like if you're like, like, if you're like, this is just what you're going to eat. And then you have, I've had three kids all at one time, like all like throwing temper tantrums because they're starving and be like, mm-hmm. eat your chicken breast. And they're like, I don't want chicken breast. It's like, ah. <laughs> that's, 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 you're like, Oh God. Okay. Like what, do I put my foot down here or do I, and, and like sometimes it's not like they don't they're not asking for cookies they're like i want eggs you're like i don't want to be a short order cook but uh i also yeah. want to put nutrition in you and if yeah. you eat eggs i'll give you eggs yep yeah i guess that's that balance yeah the um i tell you where, where i uh <laughs> like i'm very very protective of my food mm-hmm. and i don't know if that's like from being like in the fitness background, like having like, no, these are macros I have to get or, you know, whatever. Like, I'm hungry. Yeah. I'm, I'm the same way. Yeah. I mean, my wife, I'm sitting there eating after a long day and she like, I'm telling you the kids crawling up and, and she's like, Oh, Maverick wants some daddy. He'll, he'll give you some of that. And I'm like, mm, I might finish this and then I'll go get some more and maybe feed him or maybe like, cause like, no, like I had a plan with this and I'm this hungry. I know exactly what I'm putting in myself right now. So yeah, I have this little internal, struggle of like oh my gosh she's guilting me into giving up my food again which is the same thing when we're out of the restaurant i ordered exactly what i want you know and then she starts like eating off my plate and i'm like oh i would have just ordered you more food if you wanted that like i knew exactly what i was eating right here <laughs> that's my my wife is exactly the same so she'll say like um so like hey do you want a beer which means like she wants a quarter of a beer she doesn't want a full beer and i like here's the deal i don't want two beers and I don't want three quarters of a beer. I want a beer is like my, I have trained myself to enjoy a 12 ounce beer, you know? <laughs> so like three fourths of that is not satisfying and I don't want to open the second beer, <laughs> but, uh, so here's my strategy to like, I'm the same way, but with kids, I'm like, I'm not giving you my food, dude, I'm hungry. And I want all of this. So like, I, <laughs> I like, and my kids are at the point now where they, they can crawl on top of me and they'll fight to like get to it. So it's not like when they were little, when they were little, you're like, we're just stuck down there. Sorry. 
but I pull myself all the way up to the table and I cover my food in hot sauce because I don't, <laughs> I don't want anything hot. And I like it. Like, oh, like, <laughs> yeah. I'll like, I'm shoveling it in. Sometimes I'm like, Dad, I want some. I'll be like, I'll either be like, no, and just eat it, or I'll be like, here. And they're like, Ugh, it's hot. So, <laughs> right, real quick, like, um, Dad's food's hot. I don't want that. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, they're just, yeah. So that's, that's been my strategy for, I don't know if that's good dad advice or not, but that's what has <laughs> worked for me for, for protecting my food. <laughs> how, how have things changed for you now that I guess, you said they're two, two, three, four, roughly. Yep. Um, so the last few years, you went from you went from a power lifter to starting to do more CrossFit. Uh, how has it evolved for you? Um, essentially, went from uh, like training three hours a a, a day. They're going like, well, that's not a reality anymore. So shifting. So I went from like training in a group, but like a powerlifting group. Then we just trained for, for you know, two or three hours um, to just doing the, the CrossFit classes. So for me, uh, having, having that class structure, having, not having to think about it and write my own program, like being able to just show up and work, work out was super helpful. Um, uh, I used to train in the afternoons. It was mm -hmm. like I'd do my work day. Then that was like my break. So I would like, I get all my work done. I'd go work out. And then that was, you know, kind of like the, the, the segue between work and home. So I like, I liked the kind of that break, but then that it became not a, not a reality because if I could be home earlier, to be with the, the family. That's what I wanted to do. So I've just had to like figure out different times to train and, and, and get, get classes and train, train in the morning or, um, uh, eventually it kind of got to the point where it's like, with, where if I had trained in the morning, like I had to go to work to work out at, at the gym, go back home to, to get the kids. So, um, stopped doing that. Started just working out in the middle of the day. Um, I'd say that the biggest, like some of the biggest changes for myself regards to like health and fitness as um has has been finding ways to be competitive and see progress within a more realistic structure it's seeing the big picture and being like i want to be the healthy and fit fit uh most healthy and fit you know 37 year old dad that i can be but i'm not willing to sacrifice time with them so it's like instead of doing like a saturday saturday workouts like we are going to go do fitness as a family we're going to go ride bike so um as my kids have started to grow older like they we don't really watch too much tv during the week i mean if it was um if it was raining outside and they were just we had just used up all of the internal things we could think about we might watch ninja warrior or something but primarily what we do as a family is we go outside and we do physical stuff we go bike riding we go play basketball we go kick soccer balls we go climb on um climb on playgrounds or go swimming so um as they've aged it's been cool to be able to experience more life with them through the lens and abilities of health and fitness so, yeah yeah i look forward to that uh and I, I like the way you put that too about just setting a more realistic parameter for what this competitive version of yourself looks like. Cause that's, I think that's a similar view to what I have. And I'll, I'll see you though. Cause like you and I, we do the same programming now. So I'll see what you post for your, your class workout sometimes, but then I'll still see you sneaking some extra work uh, there, you know, here and there. So what's, what's driving you when you're doing that? <clears throat> well, uh, and kind of speaking to that, essentially what happened was, um, you know, Got it into level method. Mm -hmm. uh, was so like here's what you're good at. Here's where you're, you're you need to work at. So okay, I, I want to work at that. Mm -hmm. And hey, you know, built my business up to a point where I had the kind of space and capacity to do some of that stuff. Yeah, I could wake up in the morning before the kids got up. I could get a workout in. I could then take them to school. I could come to work, get my work done, 
do a, a class in the middle of the day, finish up work and go home. Um, and so essentially it was just me going like, you know what, I want to, I want to, I've got the, the, the space now to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, but that was also with the realization that like once Ninja Gym happened, that was going to go bye-bye real quick. Right. So uh, like this month it went bye-bye. So yeah. now I'm not, now it went back to, all right, I've got one hour a day to train. And that was kind of like, this is the reality is like during this time, I've got the space to do extra work. Uh, I'm going to take it while I can. And then being okay with the, the dynamic nature of and I can't be all or nothing, but mm -hmm. I've got to hit, I've got to, it's going to be a point part of my life. I'm going to keep my minimums in, which is an hour a day of, of ex exercise and just going, okay, we're about to launch this thing. I've got to have more time in the day to get it done. That 12 o'clock class went bye-bye and I would just work out in a class in the morning time <laughs> before the kids get up at 5 30 AM, go and do that class. Um, it's, it's a car location, so it's, it's where I live, and I can just come back, get the kids, go to school, and then I got my, my whole day to work. So mm -hmm. that was kind of essentially like I had built up this space in my life, but also knew that, that I built up that space to be able to take on the Ninja Gym. Yep. And the Ninja Gym hadn't happened yet, so I just like I felt filled it with, with you know, fitness, and then now that's, <laughs> that's, that's mm -hmm. going to be changed for a little bit. And that's, I think, been one of the most important skills as a parent is just being okay with the the flux. So that's, it's going to evolve. It's going to change uh, as a business owner, as a parent. So that's, you know, that's been, I think, a super important skill that, you know, I think we would see in all of our colleagues. Yeah, it's just, I, um, I and I'm sure you've heard this. It's like, um, you, you've witnessed and seen people kind of get on and off the exercise bus, you know, and they'll, a lot of it's like, well, work's just gotten kind of crazy here lately, or you know, I got married or, um, I had kids and, and when, when we, what we both kind of said was like, no, this is foundational. Mm -hmm. It's like, this wasn't a negotiable. This is something that I've got to learn to do throughout my life. So there were other things that were negotiables. Going out and, and, and eating and going on date nights, like three or four nights a week, like that was a negotiable that got yanked, you know? Um, but essentially that was like, okay, I have to get more efficient with my time. What are the things that are going to get taken out? Netflix taken out. Mm -hmm. Um, so that I can prioritize the things that are important to me. I'm, I, I don't want to, I don't want to sacrifice my business. This is how I feed my family. It's important to me. I don't want to sacrifice my health and fitness. It's important to me. I don't want to sacrifice my family. It's like, these are my three non-negotiables. They get inserted first to the minimum requirements and then everything else, if there's space for it, cool. If not, sorry. When you said you, sh we see a lot of people that get on and off the fitness wagon all the time. And I think for you or I, it's like, I'm not getting on or off the fitness wagon. I'm, I'm getting off the three hour a day fitness wagon and going to the yeah. one hour a day one. But like, you know, it's that there's always a minimum. It's, it's never going away. And I know the other thing that I know you do that I do this super important to me for me is, you know, you're into the, the cold plunges and the saunas and all that other stuff, which has only become that much more important now when I'm thinking longevity with my kids, yeah. but also just balancing the stress of everything now so you know I'm, I'm looking at that like okay you and i talked when we met up uh, a couple weeks ago and, and i was telling you how i had historically put this pressure on myself like oh it has to be like a 60 minute xpt three yeah. round fire and ice experience and i'm like man i'm struggling to get that in and i was like you know what i need to remove that again all or nothing mentality and i can just go hop in a three minute cold plunge real quick and get you know, 90% of the benefits, I'm way more likely to do that every single day. If I don't build it up into this monstrosity of it has to be a full 60 minute session every single day. Uh, and I know, for me, again, as a parent trying to do fitness with so many of my members and clients thinking about that kind of stuff. So many people get caught up in that all or nothing yeah. thinking, and then all the, the habit based coaching comes in. And the same thing I'm telling all my clients, it's just like, hey, you don't need to do the full 60 minutes. Like I just need to get you in the door or you're going to like get up off your couch and walk to the mailbox or whatever it is. We're going to start somewhere and do something. And that's better than nothing, you know? 
Yeah. Um, so that's one of the biggest lessons I think for any new parent. And for me as a business owner and a parent that, uh, just accepting, you know, something's better than nothing and, and still trying to fit those things in whenever we can. Yeah. One hundred percent. I use it. I call, I call it the uh, light switch versus dimmer, dimmer switch analogy. <clears throat> I was like, that light has to be on at all times. I'm going to adjust the brightness of it based off of what's appropriate at that time, but I'm never going to turn it off. <laughs> so the all or nothing, nothing is like, yeah, if I can't train five hours uh, a week or one hour, you know, um, if I can't tra train an hour every single day, then I'm not just not going to do it at all. It's like, well, okay, that may not be a reality at the moment. One day a week is better than none. Mm -hmm. like, it's like, keep the light on and then it's easier to turn it, turn it up if we need to, because we, we've at least got the habit of like that one end. It's easy to go from one to two, two to three, so on and so forth. It's really hard to go from zero to one. It takes a lot of, yeah, a lot of uh, energy. Oh yeah. Hardest parts is getting out of bed and getting there, you know, hundred percent. What, uh, how do you feel like, um, the, the cold tub and sauna has impacted you as a parent? Uh, it, absolutely plays into just my overall mindset and the stress management and the resilience, which were very much things that I was already practicing via stoicism and via all these other things that I was doing before I discovered that, but it's been just amplified by that. Now, again, you're, you know, you're sitting there suffering in the cold or you're suffering in the hot and staying in a little bit longer than you want to. And, you know, like, I, I like the, the walls analogy that Andrew Huberman talked about where, you know, you're, you're just trying to like get over this wall. And it's like, maybe I'll go two or three walls today. And that's what I'm shooting for right now. And then it, the, it, you have to sit there and calm yourself. You have to breathe through those difficult moments. So, so then as a parent, obviously all the time, anybody can relate to that. Again, I've, I've got twins. One of them is screaming and crying. Okay. I try to help him. Well, now the other one's screaming and crying and I can't help him. My wife is at work. So He's just going to be sitting there wailing while I'm taking care of this guy. And I'm feeling terrible that I can't take care of both. It's also just physiologically stressful to have a screaming, crying baby. So you breathe, you breathe, you know, and so you, you, you lean into all the same tactics and skills to calm your mind. You know, this is okay. We've been here before. It's not their fault. They're infants, you know, just all these little things. And when you're having all that same self-talk, when you're struggling, through any physical challenge, whether it's exercise or the, you know, the, the hormesis, the you stress, the, the, the physical discomfort of the cold or the hot, uh, and, and just the breath leaning into your breath and, and calming your mind with that. So yeah, that's, uh, that comes up all the time every day now with all those challenging moments you were talking about puke. We've just had two, two bouts of stomach bugs and yeah, puking, diarrhea, just nonstop. And again, you're just like, oh, just got thrown up on for the fourth time today and doing our fourth round of laundry and baths. And it's all, <laughs> you know, all right. Yeah. The, uh, I look forward to the day where I don't have to deal with someone else's poop. That'll be, that'd be an exciting day for me. I will celebrate. <laughs> celebrate all the in-between years when you don't have to deal with theirs and they don't have to deal with yours yet. Yes, this is great. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I, 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 uh, actually use a lot of that breathing to coach and calm my kids down. <clears throat> I, um, when they get, uh, when they get out of sorts and they're throwing a temper tantrum or, um, or do they get hurt or whatever? I'll say, breathe with me, bud, breathe with me. And we say, uh, smell the flower, blow the candle, smell the flower, blow the candle. And then we'll say, smell the flower. Bookers. <laughs> and um and a lot it's funny man it, it, it's it's so like if, if you've walked someone through a cold tub experience for the first time and you see them go <laughs> you know like that's exactly what kids do when when they're lo lo losing their minds like <laughs> and mm -hmm. um and so like like i communicate with them so, all right we gotta get control we gotta get control we got to breathe. We got to breathe. Breathe with me. The guy, I can't breathe. Like you can breathe. You can breathe. All right, come on. Smell the flower. And I'll just do it with them. And it's like, it's, it's, it's cool to see them learn that skill. Now they're, they're resistant at first a lot of times, but then uh, the more I do it with them, the more they'll use it to like yeah. get control, start breathing, get back. And I'll be like, all right, you okay, buddy? And they're like, yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> and it's, yeah. it's, that's a cool experience.
I, I saw another parent do that with a kid on a climbing wall uh, recently, and and that hit me so hard. I was like, oh wow, like that's what I do every day, and that's exactly what I'm going to do as a parent when my kid is stuck in that situation. They're scared and they're freaking out. Yeah, talk them through those same things. I didn't have those words. So that was great to have the the boogers and the the candle and all that stuff. Um, and I think with you starting the ninja gym too, there's probably an opportunity there with kids getting scared of stuff. So that's probably a skill you can teach a lot of those kids. And and yeah, they're going to resist it or not see the value in it initially, but you, the repetition, you do it again and again and again. And then eventually when it comes up in school or in a sport or wherever else, you know that it'll start to click. And it's like, oh, this is that kind of moment. This is that thing my dad's been teaching me for 10 years. Yeah. And I know if I just lean into my breath and do what he's taught me, I'm going to be able to maintain my cool not get in trouble, not get into a fight or like make a better play on the court or on the field because I'm cool, calm and collected. Um, so yeah, that's, that's very cool to start to bring that into play with them at a young age like that. Yeah. That's a, I, could, I love the, the cold experience and, um, the, the resiliency that it, it, uh, it, it brings to you. And, and, um, and that was like, the experience of like, oh, like I can teach this skill to my kid. And I kind of thought through like, well, I'm going to teach my kid how to squat and teach my kid how to, how to do pushups. And I think, you know, at some level you think like, I'll teach my kid how to deal with situations. But, um, but when like, it's inherently just kind of like, Hey, the, how, how, how should we do with this? Like I can see them <laughs> hyperventilating. It's like, dude, you got to get under control here. We've got to get control of our breath. And like just mm -hmm. kind of like talking them through that and then being like, Oh, well, you know, it's funny, like this is going to be one of the greatest skills you're ever going to probably more important than, than squatting, <laughs> you know, or bench pressing or any of that other stuff is like teaching you how to breathe and get control of your emotions and like deal with this situation is going to, is going to be far more impactful <laughs> than it, anything else I teach you. And I think them just getting to see that while they're freaking out, you're calm too. You're not yeah. getting mad at them or upset with them or losing your cool because they're losing their cool. Yeah. Then realize like, oh, dad's still calm. I should be calm. And, yeah. and I think that probably a lot of parents would benefit from again using the breath for themselves in those moments and then realizing they can impart that upon their kids. Have your uh have your kids gotten in the cold with you? Yeah. So yeah. um they've they haven't gotten in the cold tub. They like yeah. to, not to think about it. They did get in the cold tub. They like so to you, put them, your swimming pool open still in the wintertime too, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they like to, they like to put their hands in the cold. And which, you know, here's my thing about the, what I've explained to people about the cold is like, <clears throat> you know, we know what happens when you hit the cold is you get a dopamine hit and a uh, adrenaline hit. And um, it's, it's like a roller coaster. It's fun. You know, it's scary. It's fun. Um, my kids don't have the consciousness to know like, or to be fearful of cold. Yeah. And so, uh, they, they just know, like I get this, they subconsciously know that they get these cool hormones. It makes them feel excited and, and crazy afterwards. So, um, like they're constantly going like, can I get in the pool? Can I get in the pool? It's like zero degrees outside. Like, can I get in the pool? Yes, you can. Now they won't sit in there for two minutes and breathe, but they think it's the funniest thing in the world to like jump in and like bounce around and be like, ah, it's cold. So yeah, they, 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 they do it. I'm not, I don't know what age I'll be like, let's get in and breathe together. Yeah. I might try it with my five-year-old to see what he does. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's just like any of the other sports stuff that we learn, you know, it's like, just make it fun, have fun with yeah. it first. And then whenever they get to the point where they probably start asking questions or wanting to be better in their sports, so then that's when it's like, oh, okay, maybe we'll start to, do some more deliberate work here. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. That's well, cool. Ryan, I appreciate you coming on the podcast. Hopefully, uh, I think our listeners are going to enjoy hearing uh, from another dad, like what, what your experience has been and how uh, health and fitness has helped you and also how you've uh, had it, had made adjustments. So. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm still pretty new to it all, but hopefully something was beneficial in there and you know, we're all just kind of learning as we're going and maybe we'll check back in in uh, like a year or two and see how things have changed. <laughs> Love it, man. All right, man. Thanks for coming on brother. All right. Take care. NBS fitness radio. Out. Thank you for listening to NBS fitness radio. If you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to share it with your friends, follow us on social media 
and check out our website at www.nbsfitness.net. Hit the subscribe button and tune in next time for more NBS Fitness Radio.